Welcome to worship on this fourth Wednesday in the season of Lent. We are glad to have you worshiping with us today and pray that this service of worship will be a time of reflection as you listen to the hymns, to the scripture, and the reflection on scripture and the prayers during this time. We are focusing on prayer during this season as a way to enhance our own lives of discipleship. And so we will be guided by looking at prayers in scripture and seeing how they can help us to deepen our own faith journeys in this season of reflection and penitence leading to Easter. I'm Rebecca Abel Lamar, the senior pastor here at Government Street Presbyterian, and I'm joined in worship leadership today by Alexander Hudson, our associate pastor by Tommy Watts, our director of music, and Samantha Anselmo, our vocalist today. As we draw into this time of worship, let us now be called to worship. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, cleanse me from my sin. I have sinned against you, and my fault is ever before me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a right spirit within me. Restore me to the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit. Lord, open my lips and I will declare your praise. Before we turn to God in scripture, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, help us to listen for your voice as we hear your word today. Amen. Our scripture for today comes from Isaiah 6, 1 through now, 1 through 9. Listen, listen now for the word of the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips. 
and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go and say to this people, Keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? A question that many of us have likely heard time and time again in this scripture. Perhaps a question that we ponder what our response might be. The response from Isaiah is, of course, here am I, send me. What a bold and courageous response this is, especially after this vulnerable prayer of confession. Immediately before this question, the sin is blotted away. This prayer of confession and blotting away of sin is so important for us in this season of Lent when we reflect on humanity's brokenness. It is a humbling and vulnerable act to come before God and confess our sins, but how special it is that God forgives us, no matter what we have done. Not because we have done anything to earn it, but simply because God loves us. It is because of this love that God has for us that we are able to respond in faithfulness. It is because of this love that we have the courage and the boldness to answer God, saying, Here am I, send me. What God sends us to do and asks us to say is not always easy. This bold and courageous, Here am I, send me, reminds me of a movie, We Bought a Zoo. The movie is about a family who, following the death of their wife and mother, purchase a zoo and move to take on the challenge of preparing it to be reopened for the public. In a conversation between the father and his son, the father says, you know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage, just literally 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery, and I promise you something great will come out of it. It is exactly that 20 seconds of insane courage, of embarrassing bravery, that God calls us to not just in this season of Lent, but each and every day. God says to tell this to the people, keep listening, but do not comprehend. Keep looking, but do not understand. Not included in the text that we read, but it goes on to say, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears and comprehend with their minds and turn and be healed. We are called to take a step farther, to comprehend with our minds, to turn and be healed. This requires us to silence our minds and to be present with God in the most fullest sense. To not just listen, but to hear where God is calling and what God is calling us to do. May it be our prayer today that we take those 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery and have the courage to respond to God, saying, Here am I.
God invites us again and again into relationship with the divine and invites us into a life of prayer, a time of communing with God, a time to share all of who we are, our joys, our sorrows, our questions, and God promises to hear us no matter when, no matter where, no matter how often or how infrequent, we are invited to come before God in prayer. So accepting that invitation now, let us pray. Holy, holy, holy are you, O Lord, entirely other and set apart from our human lives, and yet always present, always inviting us to come closer into deeper relationship with you, our creator. We know, O oh God, that we are sinful and broken, and we try to hide ourselves from you, just as we try to hide ourselves from others around us. But you, O oh God, know us completely and you draw us to you, guiding us to a place of healing and mercy, blotting out our sins when we dare to name them before you. And so we trust your mercy, and it is with humility that we come before you in prayer. It is with hope that we lift our concerns. And so we pray now, O oh Lord, for those who are ashamed to seek your healing grace. We pray for all who are ill, whether in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those who grieve any number of losses, whether a loss by death, the loss of hope, the loss of a future that felt planned and secure. We pray for all who grieve. We pray, Lord, for those who are overwhelmed, uncertain of how to move from one day to the next, uncertain of how to get from where they are to where to the future that they desire. So hear us now, Lord, as we pray for all who are overwhelmed. We pray, O oh God, for those who are in power, who lead in ways that affect others, who have to make difficult choices. We pray for wisdom, discernment, and for your holy guidance. We pray, God, for those who are afraid, for those who lack the courage to do what it is you call them to do. We pray that you would make them brave for the sake of the good news of the gospel and for Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh God, for those who seek understanding but continue to come up short, who search for compassion but fail to find it around them. We pray, O oh God, for those who are hungry, those who do not have a place to call home, those who are uncertain where they will stay tonight. We pray for those who are in need of employment, those who are uncertain about where they will find the funds to move from one day to the next. We pray for those who are in danger. Lord, you know the situations of those around us and we hold them before you now. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your care. Here we are, O oh God, seeking to follow you, asking you to help us live more faithfully. 
So help us to silence our minds so that we may hear your call, so that we may do your will, so that we may be a part of bringing your kingdom into reality in this world that you created and love. And we ask that you hear us now as we pray together the prayer our Savior taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the vulnerability to come before God, knowing that there is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. And may you take those 20 seconds of courage and embarrassing bravery to do what God calls you to do. And now may you go into the rest of this week knowing that it is the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that will be with you now and always. Amen.